Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Fish of Hex. My name is Travis. Today's video is going to be part one in the 300 gallon display overhaul. And I'm really going to use this video to give you guys a last look at this system before I make some pretty big changes. Now I'm gonna go over those changes, talk about everything that's going on, the reasoning behind it, and uh, yeah, so I'm pretty excited. I'm also pretty stressed out, but I know this needs to happen. So let's go to start. Uh, with each rock structure and I'll go through the changes that are going to happen now when it comes to the left rock structure here Nothing's going to change I'm not making any adjustments not moving anything around Probably the only thing that I might do is do a little bit of trimming because things are starting to touch especially in the back with the poison ivy and the Barney coral uh, definitely got to get in there and uh, Cut some of that up, but uh, it's not so much of a priority compared to the rest of the tank now moving over to the middle left rock structure this is the one that's going to take the biggest hit out of the tank now as i mentioned in previous videos the wwc has been stning it's gonna be difficult to see but basically slow tissue necrosis all the way over here mainly because it's getting touched by the uh, red monte cap it looks orange in the video but trust me it's red it's getting touched by that and uh, it's just shading itself out now as i mentioned before i know this is natural in the uh, ocean you know corals get shaded out it dies it turns into rock and you know that's how the ocean floor grows but this is not the ocean floor this is my display tank and i have to stare at a ton of stn because of shading and i don't want to stare at it anymore and the second reason why that colony is going to be completely removed is because nothing underneath it can grow there's so much light being taken up by this tank or this colony that nothing here has a chance of getting any light there's a big bare spots it's just it's just awful so uh, that entire colony, which is about the size of a basketball, is going to be completely removed and fragged out. I will save some chunks of it to put into the uh, grow out system. I already have some pieces in there, and I'll probably see if I can fit something in the 40 gallon, but it's pretty tight over there already. Um, that's what she said. I, I wasn't going to do it, but I know somebody, somebody just said it to themselves. Anyway, the uh, red Monte Cap, or orange to you guys, that entire thing got hit by Big Bertha here. All right. She smoked that thing and ripped the whole base off. Like it, like dislocated from the rock. It's just teeter tottering on there now. It's balanced, <laughs> balancing against the back wall and of course the acro. So that entire colony is coming out. Uh, I'm gonna frag that up. I'm not not really sure where I'm gonna put everything, but we'll talk about that here in a minute. The next colony is the uh, green digitata. The entire thing's coming out. Uh, green monte cap. Gonna get all that out of there. And then this panopy bird's nest, which I call the fish killer. That entire colony is coming out. Um, I thought it was a good spot originally, uh, just to kind of move it from being stuck under here uh, uh, way before. But the fish come around and swim and you know smoke into that thing, get all cut up. You see, there's not a ton of swimming room in here. Uh, it's pretty tight on both sides. I'm not gonna say it again, by the way. And uh, it just shreds the fish because of how uh, pointy it is. And uh, it's like running into you know uh, pricker bushes. I think that's well, that's what we call them around here, pricker bushes. And uh, you know they hurt, so that's basically what's going on when the fish are swimming. They're they're getting knocked out by that bird's nest. So it's got to come out completely as well. So that means we'll have one, two, three, four, five colonies just right here removed, and it's just going to be bare. Well, it won't be bare for long because we're going to replace it with acropora. But that's that's all going to happen on that one rock structure. You can imagine it's going to look pretty weird for a while. But uh, I've kind of come to terms with that. So moving over to the next rock structure, the purple stylophora, which, by the way, I fragged out 40 frags just two days ago, and it doesn't even look like it. It doesn't even look like I touched it. So that entire colony is going to be removed, and same thing for the hydnophora. Both of those will be gone. The uh, green digitata will also be removed, at least the majority of it. It's going to grow back because I've already removed it completely a couple times, and it just keeps coming back. So there's not much I can do about that unless I get in there and, you know, grind it off like I did over here for the uh, Montes that were originally there. Which, by the way, have not grown back for those of you who were placing bets. Didn't grow back after I buzzed it. And, uh, yeah, so that's it for the changes for this rock structure. Just going to remove these two colonies, free it up, and then be able to put in some nice acros to fill in the spots. And hopefully it will grow together at some point and look pretty good. Now, as for this rock structure, not making any changes. There's nothing I can really do other than maybe remove this uh, fan, the sea fan. That It doesn't really, I mean, it grows, but it's pretty slow. It's not that great looking. Um, and then if I remove it, then I can throw a couple more acros behind here and uh, let them grow out to the side. So I'll probably do that um, and just relocate that fan over to the 40 gallon. Um, and speaking of that, I can't really put too much over here because the uh, Grooves Gorgonian gets along with the uh, Plosopora. So I don't want to remove the Plosopora. I might trim it down because you can see it's getting pretty big and taking over a lot of room. But it gets along with each other, so I'm just going to leave those the way it is and not really make any changes. 
But uh, yeah, so that's that's what's going to happen to the 300 gallon over the next uh, couple weeks. I am going to start today. I had to order, stepping on stuff, had to order a whole bunch of frag plugs in, of course. Now, speaking of that, let's look at the available room for frag. So over here, I do have a little bit uh, on, on the front, not much, and then probably this much of the rack I can take up. So there's probably 100 or 50, 50 maybe to 100 frags, depending on how far I go over. So that's that's okay. And then the real issue is this rack that I added the uh, other day, that's all the room that I have left. So I, I ugh. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. I might just have to leave big chunks of coral in these tanks for a while and, uh, you know, s just let them sit there until I could find room for frags. I do have some available spots over here where I can put some grow out discs uh, in this tank, but this one's pretty full as well. And there's some big colonies back there that need to be fragged up because they're growing into each other. So... Uh, yeah, I do have a lot of high-end acros in here that will be fragged. Um, they're going to be small, so we're going to be knocking off little chunks of acros, which will go into the 300 and hopefully turn into something nice and beautiful uh, someday. Now, for this tank, as I mentioned before, I'm only keeping it up, keeping it up for probably um, another year and a half to two years max. I haven't really decided yet. I have uh, big plans for the future, and I just need to do it correctly because... Uh, you know, it's my livelihood, it's my business, so I need to make sure, uh, you know, we're building a house around the business. So it, it's something that has to be um, has to be planned out thoroughly and things can't be missed because you can't go back and just add certain things, uh, you know, if they're in the wall already kind of kind of situation. So it's uh, it's a lot of work and I'm not really in a rush because uh, I enjoy I enjoy being here and this system and the way it's growing and, you know, the way the business is. So I'm not really in too big of a rush. Plus, getting the kids through the destroy the house phase is nice to do that, uh, not not in the new place. So, uh, yeah, so maybe we'll get a year and a half, two years worth of growth on the new colonies, and we'll see what this tank turns into. Um, you guys know that I started fragging it six months in, and um, it's two years old now. It's two years and, a, what, four months, five months old? And, uh, yeah, so it, it's, it's been through a lot. It's been fragged and tore down and you know thousands upon thousands and thousands and thousands of frags have been pulled out of this tank and that's not even an exaggeration um and thanks for all the support and everything you guys do for the channel and for the uh, business but uh, yeah so this is the last look at the tank there's no reason to keep rambling on hopefully uh it will look just as good if not better here in the future but uh, i guess only time will tell and i will uh I, re I will record as much of this process for you guys as i can it is a little stressful so we'll see how it turns out but i will do my best to put some videos together for you uh hence this is part one we'll probably do a two three and then a final part four part four when we have corals in there and it's kind of done and empty but uh yeah that's about it for the video if you guys have any questions uh, let me know and i will see you guys later all right peace